because he's orchestrated. It is screaming to be an orchestra piece. It's yeah. saying, Jesse, please orchestrate. I've already been cooking oh, on it. I haven't actually started because this, this would be for both orchestra and for me. Yes. I have nothing against pianos, but I, I hear an orchestra. Oh, I, I generally write for, those of you who don't know me, for symphonic band and orchestra, and I usually write for a cast of thousands, so a challenge here was trying to keep it into four hands. I even talked to Brent some about a six-hand piece, but at the end of the day, we thought that was a little impractical for that many people at the keyboard, and you know, if you do it for five or six pianos, that gets very impractical. But yeah, that's, I'm make a note of that. If I do it, you perform it, right? I will. All right. I will. So how do we get a copy of it? Yes. I am glad you asked. Uh, I put the link live this morning. I had it set up, but I didn't go live until after the premiere. JessieAyers.com, my name, dot com. And right now, at the top of the page, there's a banner that says World Premiere Today, you know, at this date. And it has the title, which is a link that says Shinkan Zen, and it's underlined. Click it. You go to that page. Everybody pull out their phones and go there right now. And then there's a purchase button, and you get a PDF. And you actually, I'm very practically minded. There's two PDFs you get for the one price. One is a smaller print that has smaller print and fewer page turns, and a larger print that's easier to see but more page turns. I had the bigger print first. Brent requested smaller print because it was too many page turns. So I thought, well, there's both are there, so when you download, you get both files, and you can use whichever one you like. With this. So jessieairs.com, and there's that banner at the top right now. If it's not, then you'll see where it says catalog, and you go to piano, and it's one of the first titles listed, and there's a picture of the bullet train, so you click on that. So, If you get to jessieers.com, you'll figure that out. Questions? So when you were writing it, I'm just curious what comes first. Like, is it a rhythmic idea, or a melodic idea, or harmonies you want to use, or is it the form or the mood, or all of that? Or what comes first? That's a terrific question, and after I finish it, hard for me to remember. Um, it starts with me with a vague impression of what I wanted, was I wanted a very upbeat, energetic piece that just really didn't ever let down the energy much. Of course, you have to let down some to build again, just like dynamics. You can't start at triple F and go up. Uh, but So I had that in mind, and I had a general idea of like a, a going between two registers of the da 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 dee -de. Not so much in a train to train, but just the interest of da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. And one reason I thought about six hands, you may have heard this in a number of uh, places in the piece, the accompaniment is essentially in the middle register, with the left hand of the primo and the right hand of the secundo, they're going ta da 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 and then the right hand here is adding high notes, and the left hand here is adding low notes. That's why I thought, well, six hand would make more sense. Somebody in the middle doing this. Uh, but as you said, we discussed it. And, and Brent was very helpful. I, I emailed him three or four different ways. Like, I could do it this way, six hand. I could do it two or three ways, four hand. And then he said, I think version C is your best bet for notation and what is practical. So I, can, I am a non pianist I was a percussionist once upon a time and a pretty good one once upon a time. Uh, but so I have to be careful not to tell them, you know, to play it with mallets. They, they really like to <laughs> No, I may make a six-hand version if there were some folks that really wanted that and thought they could use it. Uh, it's, it's also a little bit of work to that. So, so I feel like it, rhythmically, it's pretty evocative of the train, obviously, the whole time that motion going. Is there something that you did compositionally to make it specifically Japanese or to try to evoke that part of the concept? No, I did not. Really? It kind of worked for me, though, specifically. There, there's, it went through a sort of heavier, more almost industrial parts, and then there would be moments that seemed almost more pastoral, but with still the energy. Sort of felt like passing through the country at a part, and then going to a city, and that sort of thing. There is, and it's uh, actually, I'll bow here to Brent, the metaphor he came up with. It's sort of like you're riding on the train, and you go through different musical landscapes. Yeah. So, you know, you're in the city, and then you're in the country, and, yeah. and landscapes change like that. And mostly, I wanted... What I did have in mind to answer your question was a piece that morphed from one style to another. Yeah. Now the trick there is to make them sound like they belong in the same piece, or else uh, it's like, well, what are, what are all those sections doing in the same piece of music? So, and then there's some compositional technique and how do I sort of ease into this style from this one with, I need this in the middle to glue them together. 
So I did have in mind that that you go through different styles. So we have some minimalism, we have some boogie woogie in the yeah. pan, some jazz things, some concert band type writing of the juxtaposition of different triads. Bum, bum, bum. You know, and I really like that because to me that's very exciting music. You hear who's who's going to hit the next thing? Yes, ma'am. Um, could you talk a little bit about collaboration? Because you said you guys worked a lot together. So I was wondering how how was it done? Like, did you first learn it and then met or? Brim lives yeah. about two blocks from me, so it's very <laughs> easy. Uh, I just walk over there. And Raquel, too, just comment you go. There were the initial questions, which he already mentioned. And then uh, it was written, and uh, there were too many page turns. I said, we need smaller print. Give us fewer page turns. And it's great to be able to ask that. Like, you can't call your publisher. Work with a living composer. Yeah. Yeah. You can ask us interpretation yeah. questions or just say, I need fewer page turns. Yeah, it's like the first version. 48 pages. And that's still available if you need big print. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, there was that. And then after we had learned it, or almost learned it, we met with um, Dr. Ayers twice. And uh, just talked about, you know, notational things. He had questions of, is this the best way to write this? Or, um, and, and some things had, where I'd say, that's not what I wanted. I wanted this. What should I have done? They said, well, yeah. in that case, you need to put this slur in, or you need to just right at the bottom, like pedal. And so we would talk about what tells a pianist what I'm after. And uh, that's very helpful for me. I usually try and seek that, you know, if I were going to write a violin concerto, I'm going to be talking to a violinist, because I just sort of go generally to do that. <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty much it. Okay. We met twice and we discussed what we wanted and what would best show what was wanted. Went from there. Back to you. Um, writing this as a non pianist, did you, how did you write? Did you write at a piano or did you write through some finale to Bailey or something or other? Or what was the process? Um, it was a combination. A lot of times I'm writing at a piano, especially a harmony thing that, you know, those fat chords that start just, do I want a second? Do I need a fourth? And just what sound do I like? <coughs> and, and working that. Uh, I do the notation in Sibelius, that's, but that's always. You know, the computer doesn't write the music for you, you all know that. And I'll do that, and then sometimes I'll tweak it, because it does play back, and I'll say, oh, right there, that's a dead spot. I've, I've got to fix something there, I don't know what yet. Uh, so sometimes it's pencil and paper. So I, I use every tool I've got. Yes, ma'am? Hi, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about the commissioning process. Um, a friend and I here have just started a small project where we're commissioning a bunch of pieces from a bunch of different places. Uh, I suppose my question is, uh, are there any pitfalls to avoid from this side of the equation to yours? I have a page on my website where it has some information you could look up. Uh, commissioning is paying a composer to write the music that you need. Uh, you would want a written contract. And this is after you've talked some. You want to talk to the composer or composer, say, this is what we're after, and the more information you can give them, you know, if an orchestra wants to commission me, I want to know where are you going to perform it, what's the occasion, what else is on the program, how, you know, how long, do you want a three-minute piece or a 20-minute piece, mm -hmm. and then be aware there's expense with that, and the longer the piece and the more complicated, it might, you know, and more the reputation of the composer. Corelliano, is he still with us? You know, he's going to charge a whole lot more. Of course. <laughs> but that's the main thing, is talk to the composer, really explain what you're after, and then, when all of that's done, have a written contract that spells it out. We need it by this date. I had that with, you know, the MTNA and Ohio MTA is no stranger to this. So it was a written contract, very specific. We need the music by this date. We need a piece, you know. Now in this case, it was pretty wide open as far as so you can write it as long as you want, but we only have time to perform 20 minutes of it. Follow-up question then. Um, how was the editing process with so, like, our project is a little bit of a collaboration between us and our um, composers that we're going to be hired. That's where I, I think the first thing is just talking uh, on the phone or face to face. And somewhere we need to work together. And, you know, under this case, uh, Britt and I have known each other for over 20 years. So I know this would be, I know Britt will be very helpful to me. And I need a pianist point of view. 
And I think the pianists are probably good to be able to put in some input to say, you know, this is not humanly possible. Could you possibly <laughs> adjust it? <laughs> you know, I only have the two hands, and this part needs six hands from both of us. Uh, so I think talking to them, and, and I don't know quite how to specify that in a contract, but somehow we will be working together to adjust. And it depends on if it's somebody you know or somebody you don't know. Uh, you probably need to specify when payments are made. Uh, a lot of time it's common, um, if I don't know the parties, I want 50% to begin with and 50% when it's completed, and that's because I got burned once, got the piece written, and then this person said, oh, well, you know, actually, I never did have the money. Now, I did not ask that with, with, with Ohio MTA and MTA. I, I know those folks, and there's not going to be an issue. So, but, uh, and so sometimes I ask for that, and sometimes I don't. But if you're asked for that, that's pretty common. It's good to commission new music, and then from then on, oh, in the contract you want it to say above the title, commissioned by, because your name should be there. You know, this one has commissioned by. Speaking of that, so a lot of you may know Sandra Carnes, was yeah. formerly on the national board. I'm from Malone, so Sandra's the one essentially that hired me 21 something years ago. But Sandra got an advanced version too. I said, Sandra, would you look over this? And I sent her the PDF. She's moved to, I think it's Arizona or something. No, but, uh, and she looked over quite a bit and had some very good notes for me, like the boogie woogie thing. It used to be all eight notes throughout. She said, yeah, that's easy copy and paste, but somebody's hand is going to get real tired because it was like <laughs> measures and pages and pages. And so then it starts that way. Well, one, I saw one thought like, oh, no, they could play that this way. And then later on, it just goes down to the quarter notes because I've established the listener's Thank ear. So that line is going. <laughs> now they can just drop down to quarter notes. Yeah. Uh, and, and then, and Brent and Raquel also gave me very good advice, so I thought I'd mention Sandra. Sandra and I are very good friends, worked together for years at Malone until her retirement. So, um, so I ordered it and then I'll be getting an email with the link to do the download? You should, it should have already done it. You should have gotten an yeah, email, it could be but if it does not work, then you just there's contact, you just email me and say, hi, I ordered this and it didn't get it, and I'll just send you a PDF. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, my website is homemade. I, you know, I don't have thousands of dollars to hire a web company. So sometimes that automatic email, once you order it, you're supposed to get an email that says click here, and it downloads. If it doesn't work, let me know. I'll just send you the PDF directly, and you get it. My question would be for Brent and Raquel, as far as now having performed it, if you were to teach the piece, how would you approach teaching the piece with students? Are there Great specific question. challenges or? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> mostly the whole piece. <laughs> well, I would make sure my student had a metronome. Um, <laughs> there are a lot of rhythmic challenges. Uh, even in one part where hands are doing completely different things, and, um, uh, there's a lot of offbeat and you know, cross rhythms between hands and between people. So um, the the rhythmic challenge would be probably first. There's a very wicked scale at the end. Uh, write in a lot of fingerings for those two. Um, what sort of Finger span do you need for this piece? Um, um, octave. <laughs> yeah, I would say I, I have very, very small hands. Um, and so parts were tough for me to, to keep going um, at a loud a dynamic. Um, but yeah, no, uh, at least be able to get an octave. I don't think there's anything bigger than an octave. There's not, no. Yeah. Patrick just let me know in three minutes we need to change venues or so. So maybe one last question. Or do we have time for one? And more? if you're coming to, to lunch, um, you'll have yeah, I'll be at lunch. chat and ask questions then as well. They call me in freshman theory if it's a free lunch and you're a musician, you never get in line. Because you never know when you're next. <laughs> can, we, can we thank our performers? Thank you so much. Our lunch, I think, is available up here. If you will get order lunch, um, if you